how I built this fencing using 4x4 square fencing. As you can see, I'm using 6 to 8 inch. These are actually 8 inch pilings that I use to kind of make it match the rest of my deck. And as you can see, I have it holes drilled into the piling and then holes drilled along the base into the timbers. And then holes, of course, drilled on the underside of that. So it's kind of a little bit of a puzzle to put together. Um, being on the piling, it makes it a little tougher. So I'll go over exactly how I figured out how to uh, cut this to work perfectly. One of the things you have to do on the stuff with the pilings is I have to drill um, an eight inch notch in my wood. Now, if you're just gonna use standard four by fours or six by sixes, this won't really be a step that'll be that complicated. But for me, it was a little more complicated. Um, so of course I make the layout of my line exactly where I need to make my radius cut. I made a center line down the middle of it to line up the center of my bit. And then I uh, bring this over. Of course, I use a square to square myself up with the line um, and the bit. And then I go and make sure that my bit is going to be lined up with my center line mark that I made. And one of the other things, I got it on my press. It's uh, it's dirty in here, so please mind that. But I got it on my press, and then to make it level, of course, I I got my uh, my regular press over here. With a couple 4x4s four there, 6x6s, six I mean 2x6s. Uh, um, to um, give me a nice level cut. So when I cut down, once I cut down through there, I'll also have to flip the board over and uh, cut the remaining way on the other side because the thickness of this, of course, does not conduce me to be able to go all the way through. And then with that, I'll do the same thing on the other end, and then I'll have the right length board to go on the bottom and on the top for the railing. What we're going to do here now is I've made my line down here. I'm going to also put a piece of wood on my press so that uh, when my blade comes down it cuts into this piece of wood and not into my metal surface. So what I do is I take this thing here. I'm actually lining up the center of this saw. The I mean, I'm sorry, the edge of this saw with my mark. And then once I, I do that with this square, this square edge, and then I'm bringing this down and then lining up my drill bit with that center mark that I made. Now I have a perfectly good alignment. I put that down in there just a little bit and then I take my clamp and you want to clamp this on here because if you don't clamp this on here, it'll move around on you, of course. Now I got it clamped on there. Now we'll turn the drill bit on and cut our mark. I want to double check that I feel like I'm on there nice and square, and I am. So after I've cut, I'll remove my clamp, take my clamp off, put it to the side, and then I'll have to flip this board over and then come from the other side through my drilled hole that I went in on the first side. Mm -hmm. That drilled hole is right there. Mm -hmm. So I will do that. So there is one little trick that I do to try to line this up because it's sometimes hard to see this little bit and lining it up with this hole. So I just kind of take my marker and go around it like this so I can see it. And then uh, I'm just going to line it up with that. Sometimes that takes a little bit of finagling around and we'll get it lined up. Put the drill press down on it and then we will make sure we're nice and square on my lines back here again. Make sure everything's square. Put my clamp back on it. Now when this comes off of there, one of the things that I did in the very beginning is that I made sure that I cut this so that it wasn't 
I wasn't cutting through both sides of the piece of wood because if that piece of wood comes when it comes off of there it gets stuck inside of here and it's very difficult to get it out so I've cut them off at like five inches since I'm making an eight inch cut so I still have a spot for my pilot drill to go but I don't end up with this piece of wood that I can't get out so I'll continue to drill this you can see now I have this piece of wood stuck in here so the best thing for me to do with that piece of wood is to turn your blade backwards and pull down on it to get that piece of wood out because these little tiny things that they put on the side of it don't really do this job that good so the first one I did I did it full piece so it was stuck on both sides very hard to turn but when you do it that way, you just end up with these little pieces, and then you're good to go. All right, there's my helper, Will, carrying these boards, acting like they're too heavy for him. They are heavy. All right, put it on the pile of the other one that's already cut. Oh, no. Oh, no. The fence needs to be 36 inches by code. So that's this number here. And then those boards that I use at the top and the bottom are five inches. That gave me 31. The um, two and a half inch, these are the nubs I called them, but they're the pieces that are gonna go into the holes. That's two and a half inches because I made each one of those nubs that go in at least an inch and a quarter. That gave you 33 and a half. And then from the bottom of the board to the um, deck is an inch and a half. So that gave me 32. Okay, so I got my trusty buddy Will here. He is going to be my cameraman. We'll see how, uh, how he does. So this is four by four inch hog fencing or maybe they'll call it sheep or goat fencing I think it was hog yeah and it's and it's about a quarter inch thick rod that's galvanized and then welded at each one of the points the only bad thing is is that that with this that you buy at the local tractor supply is that they weld it after they, they galvanize these rods and then they weld it afterwards so you can get a little bit of rust at these weld joints. So that's why I uh, cold galvanized it afterwards. So what I did was, in the end, this is the piece that I need. So I wanted it to be an inch and a quarter depth into the piece of wood. So I cut the first one to be an inch and a quarter depth all the way along so that the rail sat on top of my board, my bottom board, when I assembled the fence. And then from my dimensions that I went through, I needed a distance between here and here to be 32 inches. After my board goes in here, my other board from the top goes on here, and I'll have the same spacing all the way down. So all I did at that point was to cut these at an inch and a quarter with my grinder with a cutoff wheel. I cut all those, and then I measured 32 inches made a mark and then duplicated that all the way down and cut them with a cutoff wheel and then after that I had to figure out the width so basically all I have to do is measure between the pilings at the top and at the bottom take that measurement and with that I know what my distance is and I try to get the most amount of metal on each side sticking out past this so that I can slide it into the pole and then slide it out of the pole to into the other pile. Um, it will bend. A uh, seven foot piece will bend real nicely. You can bend it out and get it into the piling and bend it back. And I'll show that when I go to put one up. Um, now the one thing that you'll have to do, which I'll also show, show also, is to figure out what this is 
for me, the pilings are not completely level because they go down a long ways and they aren't perfectly straight. So I have to put a level up against the piling, measure the distance difference between the top and the bottom. And then as this is, this is one dimension here, this might be two inches. And then this may be an inch and a quarter down at that end. And then I do think that on both sides. And then I'll show you how I assemble it onto the fence and put the bottom pieces on and uh, mark all the holes. So one other thing, the other thing that I made sure that I did was on these ends is I would come back after the cutoff wheel and I cut these off is I would radius these because these will have really a lot of burrs on them. But if you radius them, it also makes it a little easier, or I guess I should say chamfer them. It also makes it a little easier to go into the wood and the pilings. So that's an important step that I found that was helpful. So this step, I have to drill all these holes into the piling, and I need them to be the same distance apart. So these are four inches apart, and I made a little jig um, and drew a line down it and drilled all these holes at four inches apart. And then I marked uh, the bottom and the top so I wouldn't get it messed up. And then what I did was, to bring the camera over here that way, is that there was a line for the pilings here and here when I was building the deck. So I split that difference and I put myself a nice line here. And with that line, I put my bottom with my line lined up. And then I would have a helper with me. And I would level this with my level using the line. Because unfortunately when I did the board, I didn't make it square on the line to the board. So you put the level on it nice and level make yourself a mark up top and then as you see on top of my board I made a transfer mark which I would have line up to there and I made an extra hole here and here the screw uh, drywall screw to screw it to my board then I just came back with my drill drilled each hole making sure that I was level using the nice little level we have on top of our drill because it's easy for you to get it out of and you want it nice and straight so that when you're uh, fencing goes into the holes, it goes right in. Then we drill all these holes out. They are two inches deep on here. You could get away with an inch and three quarters or something like that, but they're two, these are two inches deep. And then we basically did that on this piling and that piling and all the pilings. Morning, where we're gonna put on the boards. So we're carrying the top and the bottom boards here. Willie is struggling because he says he has to go backwards. So we'll get these up there. Okay, so now we got it in that side. We'll go ahead and this will bend out a little bit. And we'll put these in there. And then we got it all lined up. Now what you want to do is you want to get an equal distance on this side as on this side. So we're going to pull this fence a little this way and then we'll take a measurement and move out a little bit more than five eighths and I'll cut this side and I can see that I'm only about a quarter so I'm gonna go a little bit more this way a little too far see that this goes up and this is pretty even this pole this piling was pretty square but you can see on this side that this piling leans if you get all the way out here well you can see this piling leans a little bit um, so that becomes a critical thing is if your um, fence between here and the other side um, you got to make sure that it fits in between there so now what I'm gonna do I'm going to start making some marks. First, 
I'm gonna this is pretty sturdy so I'm gonna mark exactly where this piling where this uh thing is in relationship from front to back and then I'm gonna make a mark this way that tells me where it is and then I'll just mark each one of these all the way down um, you don't need to see me mark all those but that's what I'll do and I'll do the same thing on this side so on this side I will mark where this is because this won't change that's front and back and then I'll mark it this way and then of course I'll mark every one of these for me later to drill my holes and then we'll go over that later and then uh, so all right so I think put our top plate on we're then going to do the same thing we did on the bottom and we're going to mark exactly where this first one comes through so we'll make a mark Will's kind of in my way but that's fine I'm going to make a mark that's going to be to show you forward and back then I'm going to mark here for each one of them and I'll do that on both sides so this is the bottom board that we just made all the marks on it. So the marks are across here. I also made, if you could zoom down here a little, Will. This was the mark that I made to say where exactly the uh, fence lined up. And this was the mark that showed where the uh, each one of the fencing uh, nubs were. And so then I drew a line connecting this line to the one that I put on the other end created a straight line and then transferred my marks all the way onto that line so that my fence will be perfectly straight on here even though it's a little bit towards me because that's the way the fence is made because you got two pieces like this so that one's going to be a little bit towards me so then what I do is I take a center punch and take a center punch and put it right on the hole center punch me oops center punch me a spot so when I go to drill it I'll be able to drill a nice inline hole so I center punched all the holes and the center punching is pretty important because especially with this type of wood um, it might not be such a big deal on a piece of nice flat but this has a lot of ridges and stuff in it and your drill just wants to walk around so the center punch really helps um, what I'm using, and in case I hadn't said this before, is I'm using a 5 16th drill bit. So that's .3125. Um, the reason is, is I tried like a 280, and it was really hard to assemble it. And I thought maybe the fence would shake around if I had it too big. So I eventually went to three, uh, 5 16ths, and um, makes it a lot easier to assemble. And then once it's assembled, I shook it around. And it doesn't make any noise in the wood. If you had it in metal or something, it'd probably be pretty annoying. But in the wood, uh, it's fine. So then all I'm doing on the bottom one is I'm just drilling. I'm going to start with this one just as it's easy. I'm just going to drill a hole for the bottom that will go all the way through. And the reason on the bottom one I go all the way through is so that any rain that gets on the fence runs down, runs through the hole and out the bottom of it so it doesn't rot out the piece of wood. For the top one, which is right here, Will, we're gonna drill these holes and um, I'll put a piece of tape on here to go down about you know an inch and three quarters into the piece of wood, okay? That way there, when you put the top plate on, um, you don't really have to worry about water getting up in it. Um, so the top plate will have an inch and three quarter inch deep hole the bottom plate will be drilled all the way through. And that's why when I designed the fence, the fence has an inch and a quarter nubs at the bottom. So in the end, this piece of the fence will be sitting on top of this piece of wood. So if anybody steps on it or pushes down on the fence, it'll hit against here and won't break off any of the pieces or bend any of the pieces that are on the side into the pilings. So that bottom, a uh, piece of quarter inch fencing will keep it from going down and when you see the final photos of it you'll be able to see that that fencing's laying right on the top of this for support.
Another thing that I did was, as you can see, I marked a 1BP on here. That was a reference for me that I did when I was up on the deck so that I knew that this was my number one board that went on the bottom that went against the pool side. Just so when I take it back up there because I did this before and I didn't do that and uh, I had to put the board on there three times, twice, three times. It felt like too many times to figure out where it goes. And then another thing I do is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pre uh, put my pilot hole in since it's easy to do right here for my screw. So I drill in just a little ways and then go at an angle. And I'll do that on all four corners so that when I go to put it up there, my holes are already in there. I can just put my screws in it and drill it. Screw it. We're going to use um, which I might regret later. Um, because uh, like I said before, these are welded. Uh, after they're galvanized, I mean before they're galvanized. So I'm just basically cleaning these, and um, they'll give a little more uniform color. Uh, I cleaned them just a little bit, but uh, there'll probably be problems with it later, and that's kind of why I don't know if it's a good idea to paint them or not. But I'm using uh, Rust-Oleum. Gal gold galvanizing. Um, hopefully uh, that works out good. So we are going to, I've already painted the fence and um, it's key that the fence, need, the fence needed painted um, one to give it even coat. Hopefully the cold galvanizing paint um, adheres really well to it and everything's good but um, on all the ends where I cut them with the um, with the uh, cutoff wheel. Of course, that was exposed metal, and then I chamfered them. So those ends had to be put something on them to protect them from getting all rusty. So what I'm going to do now is I put it back the way you saw it before. So I have this bottom plate. My holes are drilled in the plate after I marked them, center punched them, and then drilled these out. These are drilled completely through the board. So like I said, if water comes through, they go all the way through. And all I'm going to do now is uh, try this board up into the uh, Watch out there, special guest. get one side all the way up nice and tight as you can see I said I put this piece of fencing right on top of here so if anybody pushes down on this none of that weight will cause this thing to bend and bend these as they go into the piling because it has this horizontal support piece sitting right directly on top of the wood so I'll screw this side in then I'll go and pry that side all the way up and screw that side in and then this bottom piece will done, be done, and then I'll show you the assembly of the top piece. Alright, so Will, if you want to go and point the camera underneath it here, you'll see I put the top plate on, and we're going to line each one of these up as we hammer the uh, thing down. You don't have to be that close, Will. Mm. And we'll hammer this down, and then we'll guide each one of these in as we go down the row. made a mark on here where 36 inches is 36 and a quarter I actually made it not finding my mark uh, maybe my 
um, mark got wiped off. I can just measure it. Let me get my tape measure here. I'll just measure it. And this will be 36 and a quarter. small but this I can see my mark now it needs to go up just a tad alright now what you should have and what I try to get the most is to have This might be a little bit off, so I'll have to make this uh, the same all the way down. So I'll probably bring this side down just a little bit, or maybe this side up. I think this side up. There we go. That'll probably be about the same. Yeah. So now you have the same. See right here, Will? If you get down and look right here, this distance across here is the same all the way down. And down here, our plate is sitting on top of our board. Looks like we're gonna have to, on these long ones, put a little support underneath here to drive this up. And uh, and that's it, that's the fence up. I'm gonna put four, four screws in this top plate, make sure it's nice and level. And then uh, we'll finish the last ones. And you go to the other side, and you gotta line these holes up. Now this won't go directly in, so, stop. And then you just cut. Okay, never mind. So, we'll have to edit that. Um, Take it off. Did you stop? Ready? I already did. Okay. Alright, so we'll